All right, hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to tie up a double bead rig. Now this is something that uh, around here in the Western New York area, check your regulations to make sure it's allowed because certain places it is, other places it is not. So double check to make sure you are allowed to do this. So what are you gonna need? Well, first you're gonna need Hooks, I use octopus hooks, so these guys right here, those are number sixes, I believe. Those are Gamagatsu number sixes. Um, bead stoppers, like those guys right there. Trout beads makes them, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, they come in different colors. I usually like to run the clear. I had some oranges that I bought as well, so I have some of those. Um, I have a barrel swivel here. This is more so I can do a quick change when I'm out in the water. I don't have to retie and stuff like that. So that's an option right there for, for you guys as well. You don't have to use the barrel swivel. You can just tie them up on the water as you go and just do stuff like that. But you don't have to do that. So for today, I'm tying it up as if I'm going to the lower Niagara. So I have 12 pound leader material. So I have 12 pound leader material here and then I have a 10 pound liter material over here and then of course I have my beads so we're gonna get right into the nitty and the gritty of it so first I'm going to take my twelve pound line. I'm going to tie up not right there. I'm going to go through that. So then what I do is I go to the back end of that for the knot and wrap it six times, twisting like that. Take your tag in, go back through, make sure you wet your line when you cinch it because it's floral. And there's the, the part start of it. So then what you're going to do is I like, I'm going to do one of each kind of a thing here. I'm going to pick a bead here. What do I want here? We're going to do... <laughs> I'm going to go a little adventurous. I'm just going to go with a 10 millimeter super UV glow there. Going to do. You just take the bead. There's a hole in the bead already. Right there you just take your line you thread it through and it's gonna just slide like that so then what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna take a hook then you're gonna do your whatever knot you're comfortable doing I usually go in from the back I don't know if this makes a difference by going from the back of the hook on this and then I tie my knot six wraps of that and there you have that so then when all said and done there you're gonna have this down here like that so as you can see the bead is freely moving. Now we don't want that obviously, because if your bead is all the way, all the way up there, away from the hook, 
you're obviously not going to get the fish because the hook's all the way back here, or you're going to snag them. So that is where your little bead stoppers come in. These guys here. So what you're going to do, you're going to have this guy right here. You're going to put the skit, it's, it's, um, it's a tapered bead stop. These are usually longer, but I've used this one already. As you can see, it's tapered. You're going to put the thinner end in first, like so. And as you can see, it's going to pop out like, like that. So what you're going to do to get her snug on there is you're going to just slowly, you're just going to slowly tug on the tapered end. You're going to keep tugging. Keep tugging. And see right there, I ripped. But that's fine. It's about where I want it to be anyway in terms of tightness. So you're going to have that. So you're going to have this big ugly piece at the end here. You're going to have to be very careful. And trim that down. Like so. And that's what you're going to finish with right there. So then what you're going to do with that is I like to do between the distance of the hook and the actual bead itself, I like to do two finger lengths like that. So as you can see, we're already two finger lengths. So that's good. We're, we're right where I want it personally. So that's just your first part of your double bead rig. So then your second part, so this time I have 10 pound fluorocarbon here in my right hand. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hook and take that line. You're gonna be, this is kind of the pain in the butt part. You're gonna have something going on like that. So you put your line around the shaft of the hook and then you're going to do whatever knot you're comfortable doing so if you guys notice I went lighter than on this bead set than I did on the other one now, the reason why I'm doing that is if I snag up on the bottom I should theoretically only break off the bottom bead if that's the one that got snagged and still be able to fish if I don't want to retie or anything like that or if I forget my stuff because that has happened before where I've forgotten stuff and I've only had one. Um, it'll allow you to save a little bit more equipment that way for sure. Alright, so you're going to make sure you wet this down. And then you're going to singe her down. Like so. So that's what you're going to have. What you're going to have there, you're going to have your bead your hook, then your 10 pound test line or whatever you want to run. I, I recommend running lighter or heavier on the bottom so that way there's a weak point either here or at the bottom of your your line so that way you're saving a little bit more equipment that way. Okay. Now that I got all this down here, we're going to put another bead on. I think for this one we're going to do, we're going to do a pink bead. I believe this one, let me see. All right, that one's specifically Pulaski Hottie is the color. So again, look for the hole in the bead. You just put your line through that bead. 
let her go. So you can tie on another hook. But again, whatever or not you're comfortable with. Again, I like going through the back. And again, whatever line not you are comfortable with, go ahead and do it. So again, we have a sliding bead here. So what you're going to do is you're going to put on another bead stop. Alrighty. So again, these are tapered, even the clear ones. I'm going to put that thin end in first. Like where the hole is. Just put her in there. And like I said, you're just going to firmly tug, like so. And then we're going to cut off the extra bits. Like so. And then again, you want two finger lengths. So this is more than two finger lengths. So we're going to have to shorten this. So how you're going to shorten it is really simple. You just take your fingers and you're just going to slide that bead down. Like so. Until your two finger lengths it's a little short. So your two finger lengths, like that, away from the hook point. But uh, there you go, when all said and done, that's your double bead rig right there. So like I said, I do it so I can change it quickly when I'm out in the water. So start with a barrel swivel. I use these really tiny size 12 Bass Pro Shops barrel swivels. You can use whatever barrel swivel you want, just as long as you know it's a good barrel swivel. And you got this whole, oh, I'd say that's probably about two foot leader material. You got your top bead. And then you got your connecting knot tied directly to the hook. Then you're going to go all the way down to your bottom rig right there. And that is your double bead rig. Thanks for watching again, guys. If you could, leave a like on it if I explained it adequately. If you need anything elaborated on, do feel free to uh, leave your question in the comment section and I'll get to you. Um, again, this is going to be very effective down the lower for or any sort of salmon and trout stuff that eats a, has eggs floating through the system. You can kind of figure out what they want based on that double bead rig. It kind of helps you take the guessing out of it. But again, double check your regulations and make sure you're allowed to do that where you're going. So with all that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.